in progress. <sighs> oh, good. Okay. Carol? Admit. Okay. Honey, can you, like... Okay. Carol? You did it. Oh, my God. That was, like... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see you. No, I... Ha okay, let's turn me on. Okay. There you are. Yay! Good girl. I wonder why you didn't ask Chuck. Uh, who's the vice president or vice chair or whatever it is. Mostly because he's kind of unpredictable on whether he's going to show up. <laughs> yeah. So, well, let's see. People will start coming in now. So I guess I have to. So um, I have some last minute updates that I couldn't get. I couldn't, I didn't have time to reach you today, but I have some like grant related updates. Terrific. I have not heard back from um, Elspeth. I, I only oh. contacted her yesterday. Bad door. Yeah. Okay, so C waiting room. Is anybody in the waiting room? C waiting room. Oh, admit all. Okay. Admit all. Okay. <laughs> oh, John's here. Okay. And all right. Hi, everybody. Um, okay. So can, can everybody hear? You need to wait until they, you know, turn themselves on. Okay. Is Dick coming to the meeting? Maybe not. Um, he's had an emergency where um, Esther, his wife, she had to go to the emergency room and um, it might not be serious or it might, they don't really know, but he doesn't think he can be here tonight. So he asked me to sign on just in case. But Lily, would you like to be the... Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, if Chuck doesn't um, sign on, I would uh, be the person to chair the meeting. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. And, and I just wanted to quickly mention, because I've noted that John Real is here tonight, and I invited him. He's a member of the Natural resources and um john do you want to introduce yourself well wait a minute suzanne let's um let's mute wait. him unmute there we go yeah let's wait lily, lily lily can you turn your microphone i'm sorry john can you hear me yes okay if you're okay. not speaking uh, could you please Mute. Um, Suzanne, I think, and Carol, if you could mute. Oh, sure. Okay. Mute, mute. Um, Okay, um, I, I just would like to wait two more minutes, if I could, uh, to see if either Chuck or uh, Dick do sign on. Uh, I hope everything's okay with us here. Um, uh, GB, are you a member now? Well, let's put it this way. <clears throat> um, I've been sworn in. I haven't completed the ethics package, but... I don't. I don't know if that if that affects it or not. No, you're in. You're you're it. Thank okay. you. All Thank right. You. Yeah, you're it. Thank you very much for doing that.
So we definitely have a quorum. You know, I don't have that, um, the, the actual official document that, um, hold on just a second, that you're really supposed to read before uh, the meeting starts. Let me see if I can get it from yesterday's meeting of um, the assembly. Hold on just a sec. Well, I can't. Um, Lily? Yeah. Lily? Um, is it the one that's on the Wellfleet page with the preamble from Governor Baker? Because I can read that right now. Um, well, Dick has this little paragraph at the beginning of our, um, of our agenda, but it's really not the official thing. So yeah, if you could, re um, so if I call the meeting to order at 721, uh, I'll ask Suzanne to read the, the preamble, please. Okay. On June 16th, 2021, Governor Baker signed into law an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The state has extended authorization for virtual public meetings through July 15th, 2022. This act extends the remote meeting provisions of his March 12th, 2020 executive order enhancing certain provisions of the open meeting law. Uh, thank you for reading what's on our agenda, which isn't the correct thing, but you know, I guess we'll just go for it because I, I didn't have time to find the actual real document. Um, okay, so um, num the first thing on the agenda is the review and possible approval of minutes. I did not do the minutes. I was um, not here for most of the last month. Um, the second item is the mass clean energy. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. I I am remiss. Um, why don't we um, uh, turn to John Real and have John uh, uh, bring us up to speed with whatever um, the issues are, are at hand. Thank you. And uh, I'm here, I'm a member of both the uh, Rights of Public Access Committee and the Natural Resource Advisory Board. And I had a long discussion with Suzanne this morning. The issue that I think particularly is maybe pertinent to your thinking, and um, I, I accept it was a, I may not have all of the facts correct, um, had, to, had to do with Powers Landing. And this is a very low-lying beach, and it's therefore susceptible to the effect of uh, sea level rise, which would tend more and more to uh, overwash that beach. And Suzanne mentioned that 
she thought it was possible that the solution would be to take the road, which is immediately, which is the access road to Powers Landing, as uh, to Crescent Neck Road, and raise it and place some barriers to prevent the incoming tides from affecting the road. And I, I think I reacted pretty quickly to that because there's a risk if that's in fact what's proposed that that would actually speed up the erosion of uh, the power's landing. Uh, so having thought about that a bit more, I would just suggest that as you start to make some plans to respond to climate change, and it's good you're doing that, um, in a case particularly like this, uh, please um, bring the town conservation agent, Hillary Greenberg, and uh, the town beach manager, uh, Suzanne Grout Thomas, into the picture so that um, if there is an issue, um, it can be dealt with uh, before the process gets too far down the road. So that that's my my main concern and my main piece of piece of advice and suggestion. Okay, um, I, I just so I was a bit remiss too. So just to clarify all this, um, I had reached out as I. You're frozen, Suzanne. I guess, um, Suzanne, you're frozen. Can you hear? Here goes my connection. Oh. You're, you, we can hear you now. Oh, you're, you're back, oh. you're back okay. now, but we lost you for about a minute. So uh, you might want oh. to start over again. Okay. So um, as, as I had told this board, I would. I reached out to various town committees, boards, departments, et cetera, about um, any climate change concerns or questions or guidance they might need on potential projects or anything that should arise in their interest. And so today, this morning, I was able to speak with John Reel. Um, he had responded to me. And so I was describing some of the projects that we're working on. And he had brought up um, about these uh, landings that are at threat of sea level rise. So I did mention that there is currently a project that similarly, but it's... You froze again. I mean, your video has frozen and, and we can't get your audio. Um, you know, <laughs> this is what frustrates me um, being on. And that. You're back. Uh, are, are you hearing me okay? I, I'm having internet issues. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So. Um, so basically, I was just giving him an overview, John, an overview of what's being done, what's in progress. I, I don't think power landing or fishermen's, um, is that la fishermen's landing or fishermen's point? I, I get confused. But um, anyway, there's no decision made about any of that. So I just wanted to correct that. Um, this those roads have already as we all know have been there was a public forum on that but um so you know i i think all the concerns have been brought up but um i did speak with john today and he might want to go into it a little bit more there's a couple of projects on his clock as part of the natural resources board. And the, um, it was at public access, John, your public access, the other um, board that you're on, 
It's a rights of rights of public access. Right, rights board. of public access. And there, that, that's a board which is primarily concerned with uh, the, the the town beaches and with with fishermen's fishermen's landing. Yeah. So um, so anyway, those so what I talked about with John, I can really bring up in our our grant discussion when it comes to that unless you want me to go into it now, but that I was really saving it for that. But I did invite John to the meeting tonight in case he had any questions or comments and he did, so. Well, well, I sincerely appreciate John's um, input. Uh, that That's critical input. Yes. And, um, and his advice about moving forward as far as making sure at the early stages that uh, everything is um, run by uh, Hillary and Suzanne. Um, you know, so I appreciate the diligence of that. Um, so yeah. Ian, are you saying that um, in your report about the grant proposal um, status that John would be add some information today? Is that what you're Well, he, yeah, he could explain further, but he did come up with two potential projects that his boards might want to pursue and they would need you know carol and i in particular would be willing to work with him and those boards on it i remember what I, i'm scratching my memory remembering what the other conversation was because the the um powers landing issue i seemed to me to be more critical and, and that was uh our, our our pack. This is just information. Is also looking at the effect of sea level rise on shellfish grants. Right. We have a we have a very shallow uh, estuaries reaching up to where the grants are. So a little rise in sea level can have a big effect on the estuaries. And um, I think uh, we agreed that the appropriate uh, person to take charge of that is. Uh, Nancy. Shelfitz Council, Nancy Civetta, uh, who is off in Italy right now, but she'll be back and um, we will, we, that is we, the RPAC committee will talk to her about this. Uh, the committee has pretty much decided that it's much better to handle that under the Shellfish Advisory Board and the um, Shellfish Department than through the RPAC. They're, they're there on a day-to-day -day basis. This is not something that's that's imminent. It's not something that's going to happen um, immediately. But I've had shell, several shell fishermen tell me that they're beginning to learn how to go shell fishing by boat, which uh, ten years ago they would not have done. So a little bit of change is beginning to change people's behavior. But I think the key issue for this this committee is is the one about um landings and um being sure that we can maintain access to landings as much as possible through sea level rise that won't always be possible we know we're going to lose some right suzanne do you have anything more to add to that um yeah so you're, you're muted. Oh, the audio is gone. You're muted, Suzanne. Well, she's not muted. She's just lost. We just lost the audio. Oh, that's weird. Suzanne, we lost yeah, can, the audio. Can you hear me? Yes, now. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm in and out. Okay. So yeah, I. I think we covered it. Um, the other one, and John, you can refresh me on that, was that you were going to confer with um, Suzanne Thomas Grout. Yes, I, I did. And yeah. she, 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 had, she and I had similar concerns. Now, of course, we haven't seen the plan. We haven't seen the details. We haven't seen the... Um, uh, 
are, are you the, instruct the instruct the instructions for the um, any lever any raising of ro road beds? No. All okay. I'm saying, I'm gonna, is, uh, all I'm okay. saying is, yeah. Keep Suzanne and Hillary in, involved. So yes, on a road which is um, yes. Uh, okay. So Hillary is involved in this project. She's actually the uh, coordinator of that project. So she's aware of it. And Suzanne has attended all the hearings and she's she's in on the loop on this. So I, I think there just must be a misunderstanding somewhere. Um, I, you know, there's no raising of roads. I just said, all I said about that was that, you know, there's engineers that are coming and looking and, you know, they're, they're going to offer several solutions either nature-based solutions, maybe in one case it might be raising of the roads. That, that's pretty much what I was intending to say when I spoke to you earlier. And I, I really didn't mean to make it sound like that's a done deal because it's, but we don't even know if that, that will go well, through. If, if yeah. If Suzanne are already- uh, They are. Consistently involved, then we're in good shape. Yeah, absolutely. We we can't even go ahead with that kind of project without Hillary on it. So yeah, or the town administrator, etc. So yeah, sure. it's and it's already in process. There, I think we're at the stage right now where the engineers are assessing the situation in on various uh, floodable road points that have been chosen for this particular project. How could an interested citizen um, keep in touch with this sort of project? You know, I would contact Hillary. Okay. Um, I, I, and I'm personally checking in every once in a while just to see where things are at. Um, and it's been about a month, but as far as I know, um, that's where the engineers, that's the phase where they're at, but definitely get in, in touch with her to find out. Okay. Hillary would be the one. Thank you, it's been very useful. I, as far as I'm concerned, we're in good shape, so please um, move on with your meeting. Thanks, John, very much for joining in. We really appreciate your involvement and uh, interest in, um, and, and also to your feedback, it really, is very helpful. Uh, okay, Suzanne, um, since we're on that topic uh, just of grant proposals and the status, um, was there anything else? Yeah, there's a couple of more things. One is um, I have a little update on the Green Communities Grant that, uh, all right, did the deadline come and go? In any case, Wellfleet is applying for that. And I believe at the last meeting, I had mentioned that, uh, you know, the fire department needs a new HVAC system. And there was, there was a bit of hesitance on the part of the, the fire chief about whether to go with an electric. And the good news is that he was convinced by Rise Engineering to go that way. So it will be a um, clean energy upgrade. So that's one thing. And... Um, Okay. Oh, and the other thing is, is that I've been in touch with Hillary and uh, Rebecca Ruffley, the town, the assistant town manager, um, about, I had put forth the idea of grant tracking software for the town um, so that it could be more centralized and better organized. And I, I initially, before I started researching it, I thought it was going to be the simple thing of software and you purchase it. Maybe we can get a grant to purchase it. And it's a one-time purchase and that's that. And it turns out maybe that used to be the case, but now it's on a membership basis and it's very expensive. So they asked me to look around for free software. Um, so that's what I'm in the process of doing. Um, but everybody agrees that we need a better grant tracking and management system in town. We can do with that. 
so those are my reports for this evening. Thank you very much. Carol, do you have anything to add to that? Okay. All right. Um, okay, so um, uh, let's go back to um, the Mass Clean Energy and Climate Plan 2025 and 2030 limits, sublimits, and policies um, in discussion of electric vehicles for town. Does anybody have an update on that or was that Dick's update? I know GB, you were working on that as well. Do you have anything to add? Can you all hear me? Yeah. GB, do you have anything? I do not at this time, I'm afraid. Okay, does anybody else have any information? Um, I know that um, there was going to be one uh, hybrid uh, vehicle that was ordered, but according oh, to yes. what police chief said um, at one of our meetings, but um, that's all I know. And I know Ryan's been, Ryan Curley has been in touch um, several times about this and uh, moving the town in that direction. So I don't know oh, further. Um, Lily? Yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, so with the Green Communities grant, that has been applied for as well. I, I, sorry, I neglected to mention that, but yeah, the hybrid car is going to be requested on that grant. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. Um, Lily, if, uh, if, I, if I could, I, I just want to, I just remember, it, um, Maybe three three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I, I sent out a, um, a a little email to everybody with a with a blurb about the the Newton Police Department and the fact that they were getting hybrid cars and, and they you know they've gone through the same kind of considerations and issues that um, uh, uh, Chief uh, Murphy was talking about when he was on the meeting with us. Deferly. What's that? Chief Hurley. H U R L Y. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Um, and um, uh, you know, they they in Newton they came to the same conclusion that uh, when it, when it comes to frontline, it's a little bit different in Newton because they have frontline vehicles and then they have you know a whole bunch of detective vehicles and parking. Um, enforcement vehicles and all of that kind of stuff and and on like parking enforcement i think they're they're in the process of going to all electric vehicles the detective bureau i don't know but they they probably could but they they the key thing is the frontline um patrol vehicles um they're just they're they're not they're not at the point where they can risk going um, all electric. And I, I have a feeling that it's going to take the experience on the part of some uh, bigger departments who have a little more flexibility around, you know, around the country um, to lead the way in all electric uh, and, and provide you know, feedback to um, police organizations as to what their findings are before, you know, smaller departments like some of the ones on the Cape are, are going to leap into that pool. And I think the same is going to be true of, uh, you know, ambulances and fire engines and so forth. Right. And heavy equipment like at the DPW. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think that's it's it's going to be further into the future than some of the bigger uh, town cities, um, even in Massachusetts. Um, but it's, it is really uh, rewarding to see that uh, the, the um, various departments in Wellfleet are starting to think about it and talk about it and make some action, take some action as well. Um, so does anybody know on that, uh, about the note from the TA on the matching funds? It, um, from my understanding, it sounded like we don't have to take any further action um, that the TA said that the matching funds 
will, are still there. They can be used into the future. Um, does anybody have any different information than that? Carol? I believe he mentioned, I think there were two things that they have used some money from that fund for. So I don't know what the balance is, but apparently whatever is left is still there. And we will not need to submit um, an article until that runs out. Carol, can you um, follow up on that and find out what two things they used it for and what the balance is for next meeting? Sure, good Thank idea. You. That would be great. Super. Um, does anybody have any committee liaison uh, reports or assignments? Okay, moving on. Um, so I, I believe there was a meeting with the, uh, the other towns energy committees uh, recently. Does who can give a report on that? Did anybody attend? Carol? Okay. Would you mind giving us a summary? I'm hard pressed to remember what happened. <laughs> um, Suzanne, did, were you there? Suzanne was there too. Uh, do you want to try, Suzanne? Okay, I'm drawing a blank. I am drawing a blank. Um, it, what, we didn't have Cape Cod Collaborative. Oh, that's right. That was supposed to be the, the, the meeting, wasn't it? Was it at that? It was that. She, she showed up at that meeting, right? And that took up a lot of the evening. As a matter of fact, yes. Oh, yes, that's right. Right, okay. Presentation by okay, five Frank C's. does their newsletter and another woman who's on the steering committee. And it was a really good presentation. Yes. Uh, about how they were formed and what they are up to. So it was an, basically just an overview of what they do? Yeah, and there were a couple of other things. Oh, um, there was a presentation from the gentleman who lives in Truro. Um, Bob Higgins Steele. And it was about um, building stretch code. code. Building stretch code. stretch code, stretch code, yeah. Accompanied by a 60 page handout, which I admit I didn't read yet. Uh, but I think there's a lot of information about the stretch code if anybody's interested in that. And that was put together by the state, not by him. I think it, he attended a workshop. Right. And, uh, um, could, you send, could, could you send that around to the committee? Okay. okay. Sorry for me. Were there any action steps uh, that were determined after the five C's presentation? <laughs> okay. No, although I think both Carol and I took our own actions or possible actions in that, um, and we were going to bring this up during like new business or, you know, related. So should we wait until then? Uh, Just various things related to the Cape Cod Commission, I think. Okay. I mean, the Cape Cod Collaborative. Okay. Well, if it did, if it wasn't part of the meeting, then yeah, that makes sense that that's appropriate then. Okay. So guess what, Robert, you're up next. <laughs> Do you have an... Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on the last topic. Pardon? A comment on the last topic. I sat through that meeting. I think okay. that that they were making a presentation that demonstrated the value of all of the different groups collaborating with them and the benefits coming out of that type of collaboration. I think that was the major point of their presentation was the value it would bring to all the individual groups that are trying to do things. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Uh, go ahead, Suzanne. Uh, okay, so I got uh, broken up, and so I didn't hear a few of the comments. So I didn't know if you wanted me to go ahead and bring up. No, let's wait. Not yet. Wait until wait. new business. Um, okay. Robert, can you um, give us an overview of the Global Covenant of Mayors, just where things stand? Right. Well, you know, the, the way in which that whole process works is that there is a purity of time where all of the all of the towns and cities involved in the global government update all their information and basically explain the projects and what kind of project of progress they're making and so forth. And so there's a period of time when the the database, which is being updated with all this, is shut. Now, one of the things that happened is the beginning of April, it was opened up. So for instance, I got a notification that it was available now to be updated by each town in respect to what they've done. And, uh, and that has to be completed by, by sometime in July, meaning that all the information that we might have uh, uh, about changes in uh, great greenhouse gas generation and uh, should be in there. And whatever town plans are passed by the town that affect as aspects of this, whether they're uh, emission reduction or 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 something responding to uh, things like sea level rise or expected storms. Uh, all of those are topics that they expect towns to examine and make proposals for what they're gonna do about those things. And those proposals get entered into this database where they become accessible to everybody else who can benefit from that. So I'm now in the process of looking at where we are. And there were a number of updates that we hadn't satisfactorily completed, which included things like the, uh, the grid at the, at the dump, because it, it, it hadn't been really turned on. And so the benefits of the town in respect to that specific thing was conjectured at that point. So there now are a number of things that need to be updated, and I'm beginning to do that work. Thank you. So do you know um, about the uh, PV reporting at the, the you know, the landfill site? I, 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 I missed that one. Say you, that again. So the next item on the agenda is Coles Net Road PV reporting. Do you have that information or? Have you started to receive that information? We don't have it ourselves as members of the committee. I, I presume Dick was going to update us tonight, but do you have that information? No, I do. I do not. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, well, thank you. And um, of course, reach out to us individually if we can support your efforts as, you, as you're doing the updates. That goes without saying. I will need some assistance that other people can can lend a hand in certain specific areas, and I'll be in touch in, in respect to that. Right, right. Thank you very much. That's a big job. But we appreciate you doing all that. Um, uh, so um, I guess, Suzanne, now it would be the time the request for future agenda topics of the committee, or do you want to wait for new business? This which is more appropriate? Oh, uh, I'll bring it up as a few, uh, you know, I think we should probably have a discussion about these things. Um, one is- So do you think that it would be appropriate for a, an agenda topic in the future? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. I don't think we're gonna get into a full, wholesale discussion about it tonight. But um, should I just mention it yeah. now? Okay, so it's two things. Um, one is uh, one takeaway from the um, Kate 
COD climate collaborative um, presentation is that they offer websites, uh, single, I guess it's single page websites or something like that, that they produce for the towns, the climate committees can use them. And it's a template. And it allows you to upload reports or any news or things like that. And um, they are attracting an audience. Um, so I was just going to put out there, I don't know how well our website's doing, if anybody's reading it or keeping up with it or whatever. And I'm just wondering if it might be prudent to switch over to their offered website. Excuse me for interrupting. I have an emergency here and I have to get off. I may be able to come back. Okay. I hope everything's okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'd like to just throw in my two cents worth. I think, I think that concept is very good because it would provide uniformity across all of the all of the cape really in terms of what um, the various um, similar committees are doing and makes it much easier to navigate for people who are interested in finding out i would say it's probably not a good idea to abandon what we have right now until we have a chance to try out the template and see if it satisfies all our needs and in, in particular you know if it provides a place to put all of the information that we think is important on our, our current website if that if that you know proves to be the case then I think we can talk about um, discontinuing what we have and and uh, you know running with the the, the template website on a, on a full-time basis but I, I do I do like the concept because uh, it, it, you know it's nice if everybody can do their own thing and all that kind of stuff and so forth but it does make it much easier for um you know large numbers of people to go to one place find a common experience uh they can navigate through it much easier and find what they're looking for and it also lends itself to um you know further um, integration down the road, you know, could could become a regional kind of thing. Yeah, what I can do Wait a minute. is- I would like to re uh, respond to that. Um, so my feeling is that initially what I thought, and especially after hearing what GB has to, has to say, I agree with him about the uniformity and um, the fact that people may be going there more than they would go to our website. But I think it would be um, wise for us because we could, do have a robust website for us to to take that template page and redirect people to our website through that page. I think that would be a great idea um, to get more eyes on our website, which I think is very robust and uh, has a lot of great information. So that would okay. be yeah. Um, what I can do is um, go to, I'll take a look at their website or an example of it and send a link out to the committee. If I, if I could just add to, to what Lily said, um, I, you know, I, I, I understand your concerns, Lily, in, in terms of our website might be more robust than theirs, um, but at the same time, our what we have on our website that makes it more robust, if that is the case, um, can be used to, as feedback to the people that are basically managing this this other website uh, um, as as you know recommendations to expand, enhance, and so forth. What they're doing so that everybody will get up to a common high level of robustness. All right. I, well, I don't disagree with that. I think that's a good idea too, to give them feedback um, and to provide an example about, you know, if it's just a one page template. I mean, I think that could be very helpful and useful for a lot of towns 
But I think, um, you know, in our case, we're a little bit further down the road and um, this might be a good um, concept for the other towns uh, to move into as well in the future. But yeah, I mean, I, I think the look and feel of all that and everything, um, you know, for us to write a blurb on it and link to our website um, would just be just fine. And uh, then we, we have more people uh, seeing our website and, um, and, and uh, people, and conversely so, on our website, we can link back to their website. So I think that could be a win-win. Um, in the second item, um, I, I'm sorry, Suzanne, you had, a, you had some um, comments as well. Yeah, um, so the second item is um, I met the new library outreach coordinator and introduce myself to her um, in the hopes that in the future for our own um, education initiatives or whatever, we can work with the library for maybe films or book readings or things like that. Um, the library in the past, I had participated in some climate related book um, discussions and they were excellent. Um, the person who ran that is no longer with the library, but I thought they did a great job. I know the library on the whole is, you know, concerned with that. They're, they're very on board with the whole climate change concern issues. So, you know, I mentioned to her that maybe in the future we would be looking into doing that. So, um, and that's an idea once again that I got from the Cape Cod Climate Collaborative that they're, um, they mentioned that um, they've done things like that. Some of the other towns are doing that. They're using their libraries as a vehicle for public outreach. So, um, you know, maybe that's something that we can start looking into. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, we have in the past um, used a library for, for various things. And uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense now. Uh, especially with a new person there to reach out. Yeah, I, I also um, was involved with that book series and it was excellent. It would be, um, I think they've done it twice now and I think it would be um, something for them to think about in the future. And I, if we could be involved or supportive in any way, that would be a great idea. Um, what is the name of the coordinator? The outreach coordinator? Okay. Um, I'm, I'll say it and then I'll spell it. Her first name is Racine, R-A-C-I-N-E, and her last name is Oxtoby, O-X-T-O-B-Y. Thank you. And maybe we could even invite her to one of our meetings uh, if Dick feels that uh, that would be appropriate. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Um, does anybody else have um, some agenda topics uh, for future committee meetings? Okay, um, any old business? New business? Well, I don't know if everybody knows it, but Chuck is a new Grandfather. Oh, no. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Is it, is that um, Sky? Sky. Yeah. Sky had a daughter. Oh. Oh, how great. No, I didn't know. Oh, my God. I didn't know she was pregnant. Yes. Yeah, I didn't either. Oh, my gosh. When was that? Do you know? Uh, I think, I think it was couple of weeks ago. Not much more than that. Wow. Oh, that's, that's great new business. <laughs> um, um, well, the other thing is, I guess we're having our meetings on Thursday at seven is really the, the deal here. So the next- We are? Would be, yeah, that's what we had agreed upon. Thursdays at seven. Um, that's 
Man. Well, 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 wait a minute. You know, I, <laughs> I think what happened with this particular meeting is it was scheduled for Tuesday. And um, uh, what's the name of town hall told Dick that right. Tuesday comes after a holiday. So you can't have the meeting on Tuesday. It'll have to be later. And Dick came back and put it in for Thursday. No, but because, was, well, because I emailed him directly because it's against open meeting law to email everybody that we had agreed that our meetings were at, on Thursday at, at seven o'clock. I mean, if if we don't think that's the right day, we don't, we could change that, but that's what we had agreed upon at, uh, two meetings ago. So um, okay. is that okay or not okay for people? Is it not okay? Let me ask you that question. Well, when, when would the next meeting be? It would be May 19th, third Thursday. Mm. Well, I think the thing to do is on May 19th, let's have the discussion one more time and make sure everybody is uh, in sync. Okay, that's still good for everybody. Okay, um, well, how about that? It's 8.05, um, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. We, all those in favor? I think we can do that by raising our hands. Suzanne? Okay. Aye. Thank you very much. Have a, have a great month. Um, you. Lily, can you, can you stay on for a second? I'd be glad to. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. So Lily, what I was what I was um, trying to communicate with you earlier is is Suzanne was coming in a little bit on the loud side, but you were coming in a little bit on the soft side. And I don't know, do you know how to change your microphone volume? I think let's try. Um, if you go yes. if you if you go to the mute okay. thing, a, is this is this okay? Is this better? Is that better? Oh, wait a minute. Let me uh, let me try. See, I've got you boosted up. Hang on a sec. All right. Try again. Okay. Is this good? Uh, it's still kind of low. Is it really? Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So uh, that was <laughs> what I thought was was good, but it's not. Okay. So let's see. Well, are you are you in your audio settings? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was on my sound setting. So um, my finder and uh, let's see. Uh, because you know I was. Oh, you know what? Well, wait a minute. It, all right. So let me just make sure we're on the the, the same wavelength here. Down at the lower left part of your screen, there's a, 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 a mute button with a microphone and it's got a little up arrow beside it to the right of it. Correct, yeah. All right, if you click on that up arrow, a little window comes up and at the bottom of that window, it says audio settings. Okay. And if you click on that, you'll be in the audio settings part. And the second major heading, the first major heading says speaker and that controls the volume at your end and the second one is microphone and it has two things input level and volume all right and if your if your volume is setting oh, that is that better that's getting better what what about now that's much better okay Thank you. That's I have. I don't. I don't know how mine sounds. I have mine all the way up. Yeah, I just put mine all the way up. All right. Yeah. Big, big improvement. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate. Okay. That. Now that doesn't. That doesn't mean, in all cases, that'll be great. Suzanne. Suzanne was was probably all the way up too, but she was blasting away because she probably was closer to her microphone, and it might be more sensitive. Right, right. My my microphone is about an arm's length away from me, so yeah, me too. So I turn it up a little bit louder, so it picks up things better. All right, I just wanted to 
to point that I out. I really appreciate that, GB. Thank you so much. I had no clue that that was um, an issue. You know, I, unfortunately, with the county, I've been using Microsoft Teams, which has just been a nightmare for a lot of people. Um, so I haven't been using Zoom a lot lately. All so right, and that, and just so you know, what you just changed only affects when you're on Zoom. If you're on something else, you'll have to find its microphone settings and adjust yeah. accordingly. No, and nobody seems to be complaining about my volume. <laughs> okay, all right. And, but, uh, you know, no, I, I didn't know, and nobody has ever said anything about the volume on Zoom. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. It's okay, all right, take care. Okay, you too. Thank you very much. Have a good wait month now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.